Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. I have been on YouTube for a very long time and one of the most common questions I get is, in what order am I supposed to apply my skin prep and my makeup? If you've watched any of my makeup tutorials, you've definitely seen the order in which I like to do things. But today's video is not a makeup tutorial. I'm just going to be walking you through each step from the time you wash your face in the morning to the time you walk out the door. Please keep in mind that some steps are entirely optional. And for those of you who might be new to my channel, perhaps this is the first video of mine that you're seeing. I was a professional freelance makeup artist for more than 20 years before becoming a full-time content creator here on YouTube. I was lucky enough to have been trained one-on-one -on -one with some of the pioneers of the celebrity makeup artist turned beauty brand world, Bobbi Brown, Laura Mercier, and Trish McAvoy. So what you're going to see is the order of application I use on myself and when I used to work on clients. So without any further ado, let's get started. After you've washed your face with the appropriate cleanser for your skin type, your first step is going to be applying a vitamin C or antioxidant serum. Vitamin C reduces hyperpigmentation, evens the skin tone, brightens the complexion, and acts like an armor against pollution and other free radicals. After serum, it's time for eye cream. I've been testing out this illuminating tinted eye cream by Colleen Rothschild, and I'm really, really liking it. You want to apply a pea-sized amount onto your ring finger. Eye creams are super concentrated, so typically a pea-sized amount is all you need to do both eyes. You want to gently tap in a semicircle pattern to stimulate circulation until the product is fully absorbed. Unless the label says it's okay, you should avoid applying it to your eyelids. Step three, moisturizer. Whichever one is your favorite, whichever one works best for your skin type, that's the one you want to use. Step four is SPF. The products I'm showing you here are actually a combination of SPF and primer, so you can kill two birds with one stone if you choose. You just wanna make sure that you apply enough of the product to get the full potency of that sun protection. After SPF, I like to apply a hydrating lip treatment. And then if necessary, I do use a separate primer. I personally have very, very large pores, so I'm using the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer through my T-zone where my pores are the largest. Primers are not always 100% necessary, and most pro makeup artists will tell you that proper skin prep is usually enough. I have extremely oily eyelids, so I'm now applying a separate eyeshadow primer to my lids as well. From here, a lot of people like to do their brows or their eyes, I will typically only do my eyes first if I'm doing something very dramatic, like a smoky eye. And to be honest with you, I have not been able to master doing brows first because I find that when I apply my foundation, a lot of the brow gets removed and I end up just having to go back and redo it anyway. So next you're going to apply a foundation that's appropriate for your skin type. I will have a couple of my favorites listed below in the description box. Another optional step is a separate under eye brightener or color corrector. Because I used a tinted illuminating eye cream, I'm going to be skipping that and moving on to concealer. I will also have a couple of my favorite concealers linked down below. All right, we have arrived at another optional step, which is contouring. I do like to use a bit of cream contour for my cheekbones, my forehead, my nose, and underneath my chin. I say this is an optional step because not everyone needs contour and not everyone needs it in the same places. If you have a very, very short forehead, you're not going to want to be contouring your forehead because it's only going to make it look shorter. If you have the perfect nose, it's not necessary for you to contour your nose just because everyone else is doing it. The next step is going to be powder. If you have more mature skin, I do recommend using a pressed finishing powder to give your skin an airbrushed look. If you have combination or oily skin, I recommend using a loose setting powder. Two that I would highly recommend are the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder and also the One Size Blurring Setting Powder. 
The powder I'm using in this demo is the Fit Me Translucent Powder from Maybelline. I like this one because it smooths and mattifies, but never looks or feels cakey. Another optional step is bronzer, although I do like bronzer for most people because it really adds just a nice warm glow, especially to more mature skin. And if I have contoured, I also like to use the bronzer to set the contour in place. You just wanna make sure that you're using a big fluffy brush so that your bronzer doesn't apply streaky. After bronzer, you're going to want to fill in your brows. As you can see, my brows are very, very sparse and blonde. Sometimes I use eyebrow pencils, sometimes I use pomades, it just depends. But it is really, really important not only to groom your eyebrows, but to also fill them in. The eyebrows are the frame of the face. They can make such a difference in your overall appearance. Obviously, if you already have perfectly arched, dark brows, you can certainly bypass this step, but I hope you realize how lucky you are. After the brow pencil, I do like to set my brows with a little gel so that they stay in place all day long. And now we're going to move on to eyeshadow. I like to choose an eyeshadow palette that has a good assortment of mattes and shimmers. For an everyday look, I like to take a mid-toned matte and apply that through my crease. I have hooded eyes, so I do keep my eyes open while applying my transition shade. If you also have hooded eyes and struggle to do your eye makeup, I have many, many videos here on my channel on how to do makeup on hooded eyes. After applying that mid-tone matte, I take my finger and apply a little shimmer to the lid. And then I like to take a matte ivory and apply that right underneath the arch of my brow. And then I use an eyeshadow that's just a little bit deeper than the transition shade and pat that onto the outer corners of my eyes to give them some lift. Now, of course, the eyeshadow technique is going to vary from person to person, depending on your eye shape and how dramatic or natural you want to go that day. At 50 years old, I rarely use eyeliner pencil. I like to use eyeshadow and smudge that out along my lower lash line. And then I like to take a tiny eyeliner brush and apply a dark shadow right at the base of my lashes all the way across. Again, because I have hooded eyes, I don't want the eyeliner to be so thick that it takes away from my lid space. The next step is curling the lashes. And then after curling, I like to tight line with either a black eye pencil or a brown. So when I said I don't use eye pencils, I meant I don't use them in the traditional way, but I do use them to tight line because I just do not like that hint of flesh between my lashes and my eyeball. Next is mascara, followed by blush. For this look, I used a Rare Beauty liquid blush. I almost immediately regretted using that in this video because it is a little bit difficult for a beginner to work with because it's so, so pigmented. And if you happen to apply too much, you're going to be blending and blending and blending some more. After blush, I move on to the lips. I will never not use a lip pencil. Lip liners are not only great for shaping your lips, but it will also act as a barrier to keep your lipstick or your lip gloss from migrating outside your lip line. And by the way, I did wipe off the lip treatment before applying the lip pencil. After lip liner, I like to use a lip stain. The one I'm using here is from the brand Peripera. So here I am just patting in the lip stain and then topping it off with the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. Okay, now it's time for those finishing touches. I like to take a little concealer and touch up around my lip line. And then I take a touch of highlighter, whether it's a powder highlighter or a cream highlighter like this one from Chanel. I take that highlighter and apply it to the tops of my cheekbones. I put a little bit underneath the arch of my brow and a tiny bit in my tear ducts. After that is another optional step, which is 
the lash application. Now, some makeup artists do apply lashes after they've completed the eye look. I personally like to put my lashes on the very last thing before setting spray. Here I'm just using a couple lash clusters on the very outer corners of my eyes to give them some lift. I just feel like lashes elevate any look. And then the final step, of course, is setting spray. I do hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, I appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider doing so. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and you will become a part of the Risa Does Makeup family. I do try to upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me over on Instagram and TikTok. My username is the same on every platform. It's Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.